Last time I implemented our attack. This time we're gonna implement the mystery button. I have some ideas, I may test more of them, but at least for today's video and the core concept of this mystery button is to be a button with a cooldown. The easiest one for me to implement right now is a shield effect. Let's jump into Swift Playgrounds and get it done. To start, we're gonna, again, be passing data back and forth between sprite kits, so I need to get two more published variables here. We're gonna have shields on, um, and that's going to be a bool, and it's going to be set to false, and we will have shield cooldown, and that is going to be a CG float, so that's zero, zero. And then in game scene, we're going to need to add those up at the top as bindings. So we have our uh, binding private var shields on, which is a bool, a binding private var shield cool down, which is a CG float. And then of course we need to initialize them in the init. So we have shields on, Binding, bool, and shield, cooldown, which is a binding, CG, float. And of course, again, shields on, shields on, and uh, cooldown, cooldown. All right, and then in our content view, we are going to need to add those here. So we have shields on, which is game data dot shields on, and shield cooldown, which is game data dot shield cooldown. We got all the structure, now we just need to implement it, which is very similar to what we did previously. Inside of game scene, we need a way to write to these variables, and then inside of content view, we need a way to access and change them. So let's set up the game scene first. So we're gonna have, uh, initially we're gonna do shields on, is make sure that's set to false and we'll give our shield cooldown, and we will set that to zero, zero. So the cooldown will be set to some number and then it will count down to zero. So now, in basically we're gonna implement this uh, very similar to how we did the fire attack, at least to begin with. Um, we're gonna have an if uh, shields on. So if we wanna turn the shields on, then we're going to activate our shields which is a method. And then uh, after that, we're going to, as soon as we're done, we're gonna turn our shields on to false. So we need to create this function for activating our shields. I, I thought about how, how can I make this visual to the player, right? Attacking's very easy because you're shooting a projectile out. Uh, to activate our shields, I, I thought, well, I need something to show the player that shields are active. And, you know, I have this um, spinny node from Sprite Kit's, uh, you know, demo thing. So I thought, well, that's about the size of a square. Let's see how that works. Uh, so I just used that and I, I think it looks okay. It looks good enough anyway for uh, where we're at at this stage. Obviously, after the prototyping stage becomes, that's when you transition to more polish and you start adding textures and stuff. Right now, we're just prototyping. We just wanna make sure the game feels fun and that the mechanics all work. So there's no sense, there's no reason to make it look super pretty. So we're gonna do if shields cooldown greater than zero. We'll do 0, 0.0 because it's a CG float. So if shield cooldown is greater than zero, we are going to return. This means that we cannot activate our shields we're in cooldown, basically. We can't keep activating it. All right, so now we're gonna give our rocket a cooldown. So after we've made sure that we have zero cooldown, we're gonna set shield cooldown equal to 3.0. Okay, and we need to create one more thing up top here. We have our spinning node, but we're also gonna need a shields on node. SK shape node, which is that. All right, and then we come back down to our activate shields. So we're gonna do let W, this is gonna be the same exact code from above pretty much uh, when we create our uh, tap these squares, uh, spinning notes, whatever you wanna call them. It's the same thing. Uh, so we're gonna do with plus size dot 
self dot size dot height minus zero point five minus zero five, and then we're gonna do self dot shields on node equals sk shape node, and it's going to have a dot init of rect of cg size dot init uh, with a w height of w with a corner radius of um, w times zero point three. If let active shield equals self dot shields on node. So if we can let an active shield equal this node, then we're going to create a node here. So we're going to have um, active shield dot line width equals 2.5. Then do active shield dot run. And we're going to have an SK action dot repeat forever. SK action dot rotate uh, by angle of CG float dot uh, double dot pi. This is going to have a duration of 1.0. And then we will do a shield or active shield dot run sk action dot sequence. We're going to do an, a sequence of sk action dot wait for duration of shield cooldown and uh, sk action dot fade out with duration of 0 0.5 and sk action dot remove from parent. Outside of this if statement here, uh, this if let statement, we're going to say if let n equals self dot shield on node dot copy as a SK shape node, then we're going to say n dot stroke color equals SK color dot cyan. And, and then we'll do self dot rocket dot add child. So we're going to add this shape node that we created, this copy of the shape node, to our rocket when we press the button. And then it is going to automatically remove itself. And I missed a question mark there. But it's obviously going to do nothing right now because we haven't implemented it into content view. Let's do that next. So again, all of the stuff is already here. We're writing to game scene. All we're going to need to do is come down to our button and change the action from print question mark, question mark, question mark to uh, game data dot shields on equals true. Uh, we'll probably want to change our question mark to be something more appropriate. So let's do a shield dot fill. And then we want our text to represent that cooldown. So we'll do um, game data dot shield cooldown. Uh, and we'll do a specifier of percent dot one F. And then you might be wondering, well, that's great. So we have our, we have our shield, but, and it goes away, but our, our counter doesn't work, right? And, and we don't, you know, we can't do it again. And we're getting there. Hang on. What we need to do is have on receive timer, which we need to create a timer. Our timer is just going to be let timer equals timer dot publish every 0 0.1 on dot main in dot common dot auto connect. So this is a very simple timer built right into Swift UI. And now we're going to do dot on receive um, timer. And then we're going to have a value coming in. And we're going to say if game data dot shield cooldown. Uh, is greater than 0, 0.0, we will game data shield cooldown is minus equals uh, 0 0.1. Because remember, 0 point, for every 0 0.1, we're going to get a value in this. This is based off of our published criteria here. Every 0 0.1, we're going to have a value. So for every 0 0.1 we come in, if it's greater than 0, we're going to subtract 0 0.1. And then if um, game data dot shield cooldown is less than or equal to 0, 
we're going to do uh, game data dot shield cooldown equals zero. Um, and we'll just make sure that we keep that significant figure there. This is just to ensure if for some reason, maybe we do something where um, in the future we'll take point, um, time away from a cooldown or add time to it. Um, if we end up going negative, we don't, we, we keep it at zero. We set it back to zero. Um, let's see, then we take get rid of that. So then we're going to do uh, dot disabled game data dot shields up true false. So basically, this is going to be, it's disabled if shields up, if shields on is true. That way it'll show as disabled. And um, we can even do down here, uh, we can do dot opacity game data dot shield cooldown less than or equal to 0.0. .0. Uh, 1.0 to 0 0.3. This is how this is going to look now. So now we get our shield. You can see it's counting down and it, you know, doesn't do anything when I tap it. Um, so now, you know, there's more to this. We can add plenty of functionality to this, but uh, obviously we'll do that in another video. I think we're at a pretty good stage now to start thinking about adding enemies. So uh, that's where we'll head next. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.